Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And if you're on Facebook, look for Daily Bible Podcasts on your community groups. We would love to have you there. It's where we take the conversation a little bit deeper and hear what you have to say about what we're reading. Well, because here's here's the thing. We can only say so much um, uh, without like reading the entire text um, over our podcast. We can only say so much. And so there are things that we leave out sometimes unintentionally, sometimes intentionally, just because we don't have the time. And and so it's so helpful when someone says, hey, I wish that you would have said this, or uh, here's what I found, and you guys didn't talk about it today. I mean, it's just, there's, like you said, Trisha, it goes deeper. And that mm-hmm. that's so cool to see that people are digging in and they're doing research too. It's not just us. Yes. And yeah. so that's that's so fun. Okay, so today we are reading Mark 1, 12 through 13, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, Luke 4, 1 through 15, John 1, 19 through 51, and John 2. I love being in the New Testament. It's so cool. So <laughs> so many exciting things are happening. It so, is. Oh, I love it. So after being baptized, Jesus, the Spirit comes down, as we mentioned, and then the Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness, which this is part of the Bible that's always like, I don't understand it fully why this had to happen, except that he had to battle the devil. But he spent 40 mm-hmm. days there being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, but angels attended to him. And so, first of all, we have in there that we, he was hungry after 40 days. And the devil has attempted him three times. He challenged Jesus to turn the stones into bread. He took Jesus to the highest point of the temple in Jerusalem and dared him to jump off, citing that the angels would save him. So he was in the wilderness. So I don't know if he physically took him there or mentally i don't know how those things work in the spiritual realm (laughs) Um, (laughs) and then he showed jesus all the kingdoms of the world offering them to him as if he would bow down and worship him Mm. and it's like what guts satan has like just kept thinking what guts so like you could have all this it's like he already has all that i don't know it's just so interesting um but for each temptation jesus countered it with scripture and he rebuked the devil um and so with, you know, we see that Jesus was there with the power of the Spirit. And then it said that news spread throughout the region about him. He taught in the synagogues and he was praised by everyone. And we'll see as we're reading, we're like, we just read this because I summarized it. And then the same thing happened in the next chapter, the next section, because remember, these are different people writing about these events. Just like you're going to read about an event from the New York Times. And then from the Washington Post or whatever, they're kind of a little bit different, but mostly the same. All the facts are there. All the facts are right. And so when you're doing your reading, you're like, hey, I just read this almost exactly the same thing. It shows you that multiple people are reporting that these are the things that happen. And I love that we are getting that kind of full orbed effect here, Mm -hmm. because if you think about, I was listening to a detective talk about, um, you know, like a crime scene and you've got Mm -hmm. somebody who is standing off to the left side, when they see the crime scene, they're going to see angles that, that the person off to the right side did not see. And they're going to see different people involved in that scene. And I mean, just, just think that's what, that's the kind of thing that we're getting here is we're getting a full orbed effect of, of things because there's, there's, there's little changes, little nuances throughout the gospels. And so we're, we're getting a full, full thing. Okay. So, and uh, I'll just say real quick too, also people have different insight when they see something like we had, we're talking to a police officer one day and I was talking to whatever situation was happening and afterwards, my daughter's like, oh, I liked her Apple watch. And uh, one, of my, one of my kids that was observing the scene. Yeah. And I'm like, I did not notice that. I was like thinking of the situation and what I had to report this little minor accident, whatever, to the police officer. 
And my daughter was looking at her Apple Watch and her blonde hair, and she was so pretty. I'm like, I couldn't have told you if she was like 30 or 60. Like, there was, it was just, I was thinking about the situation. So we all see things differently, too. Well, and it's just like with the Gospels, Luke was the doctor, so he's going to be more descriptive. Mark was writing to a different audience because he knew that there would be people reading one day who wouldn't know all the customs and wouldn't know what life mm-hmm. was like then. So we've we've got just, it is, it's amazing just the different takes that these different writers have. And yeah. um, so, okay. So John's ministry seems to be concerning some of the leaders and the priests and the Levites, of course. They don't seem to understand who he is or who he proclaims. And so they interrogate him. They ask him questions like, who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you a prophet? And he answers their questions. He, John, he says, I am not the Christ. He is the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And the next day, Christ is coming toward John. And John declares that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And John didn't present Jesus as this great moral example or a great teacher of holiness and love. He proclaimed Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. He says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Like in this one sentence, John the Baptist summarized the greatest work of Jesus to deal with the sin problem afflicting the human race. And every word of the sentence is important. John testifies that Jesus is the chosen one of God. And the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples and John proclaims, look, the Lamb of God. And these two disciples, they leave John and they follow Jesus. Now, this was something that I didn't realize. I didn't, for some reason, as I've read um, in the past, I was like, I, I didn't see that John had disciples too. And now I'm like, oh, that makes sense. But, but two of John's disciples leave to follow Jesus. They were Andrew and Simon, of whom Jesus um, called Cephas, which means Peter. And Jesus heads back to Galilee, and along the way, Philip and Nathaniel join the ranks. So he has four disciples following him now. And all these men demonstrated belief that he is the Son of God, the King of Israel. One verse to really consider here is the Son of Man is the stairway between heaven mm-hmm. and earth. And I thought, oh, that that is a profound verse. He's the stairway. So then we read about Jesus's first miracle and the really the first time that he displayed his glory. And I thought it was so fitting that his mother was there for this. She was trying to show it off. Like I know when someone comes over, I'm like, hey, say that verse that you just memorized. It's like, come on, kid, perform. (laughs) But it was just it was cool how I just thought that is so fitting because she's been pondering all these things in her heart for all Mm -hmm. these years. And she's like, okay, now's your time. And of course, Jesus is like, no, it's not. But we do see that it was his time. Um, He respected his mother. He did. He did. So the first miracle happened at the wedding in Cana and Jesus turned water into wine. And we, of course, know that to run out of wine in those days was a major social faux pas. And, Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Jesus tells the servants, fill the wine jars full of water. He turns water into wine. Then we come to Passover time. And remember, Jesus grew up traveling to Jerusalem to attend. And this was no different. And astonishing as it may sound, it is likely that as many as two and a quarter million Jews sometimes assembled in the holy city to keep the Passover. And as Jesus got into the temple, he saw that merchants were selling cattle, sheep, and doves inside. I mean, stop. That was chaotic. Like, just think, cattle, sheep, and doves inside. And And poo-poo from the cattle and the sheep. This is the temple. This is the temple. And this goes against everything that we've been taught so far about the temple and the kind of things that happen in the temple and just how it needs to be purified. Everything that goes into the temple must be purified. And, and so um, the temple was being defiled. And so Jesus takes a whip and he chases everyone out of the temple and turns over the tables. Um, And then we see that Jesus' disciples see this as a fulfillment of scriptures For um, back in Psalms, we read, passion for God's house will consume him. 
Mm-hmm. And um, to which, again, Jesus, the leaders demand a sign to prove that God gave him the authority to do this. And Jesus replies, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. And of course, we know that he was talking about his end days, his when he died and rose again. But the leaders are missing the truth here because they're not even seeing who he is. They're not even seeing the truth of who he is. And um, yeah, so it's yeah. again, I mean, we're reading things not with total fresh eyes, but we're kind of reading things with fresh eyes again and getting a, yeah. a different picture, a, a fuller picture of who Christ is. And when even it said like it, we, it took us so many years to build the temple. I'm like, yeah, we've just been reading about when they were rebuilding it. Like, so we, it just feels very fresh, but confession time when I was little, I was so confused because people would say Jesus was sinless, but he like turned over tables and he like had a whip. And so I thought like, no, he's angry and he's acting out. And I, I was confused. <laughs> now I see, now I see it completely different. It was holy anger because remember God wants holiness. He wants purification. He doesn't want his name mm-hmm. to be hindered and his glory. And that's what they were doing. So this is a holy anger. That's a righteous anger. Yeah. Like, and when I was little growing up, I'm like, I don't know. They say he's sinless, but he was getting mad and chasing people with the whip. <laughs> so that's where my child brain was. At yeah. The time. Yeah. Well, I mean, and again, if you're not reading it like we've just got done reading it, chronologically, I think helps us understand just, I mean, what was happening in the temple was beyond wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's yeah. seeing. Like you said, that holy, righteous anger that he had. Well, we uh, need to take a break because we have the word of the day waiting for us. But first, we have to hear from our sponsor. Stay tuned. Okay, so the word of the day today is disciple. And disciple is a follower or student of a teacher and a lead and a leader. Um, we see today Jesus was a disciple, so to speak, of the word. He knew the word and he knew mm-hmm. how to combat everything the devil brought his way. And and not just with with words, but with the word. He knew the word. And one thing I didn't realize, again, as I was, as I said, was that John had his own disciples and two of John's disciples left him um, for Jesus. But today we saw Jesus beginning to bring together his disciples. And we know that we'll see in the next few weeks that Jesus's disciples, they sat at his feet and they learned from him. They listened to every word that he said, like they wanted more. It it just as as i'm 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 thinking through past times that i've read through the bible or read through the gospels they're like more like more master we want more and mm-hmm. and you know we need to be disciples of christ we need to learn from him to follow him and to do his do what he says and to do this we need to be in the word and we need to be like more master more more we need to learn more from you. Like, like show me, show my heart, like penetrate my heart with more of you. We need to surround ourselves with other believers that can encourage us. And even some that chastise us that hurts to be called out when we're wrong, but we need that. And we need to be disciples that are teaching others. And that's what we see today is that, is that John, he learned He was, you know, he was a student, but then he was discipling others. Mm -hmm. Jesus was discipling others. We need to be disciples that are teaching others. And um, some of you, that's your children or your grandchildren. Others, it's your niece or your nephews. Maybe it's a Sunday school class at church. I discipled young women for years. And Trisha's daughter, Leslie, was one in my, in one of my groups. And I just loved watching these young women grow in their love of God, grow in their knowledge of who he was. It was so exciting. It thrilled my heart. But, but here's the thing. I couldn't have been pouring out for them if someone wasn't pouring into Mm -hmm. me and not just the word, but going to church, 
listening to the pastor, um, being in Bible study, learning from other women, learning from older women, but also being humble enough to learn from younger women. And I was told one time by a pastor that the best orbed Christian is one who is being poured into so that they can in turn pour out. And, and so it's, it's, if you think about it, I mean, it's somebody who is, you're just pouring in and you're pouring out. And so we, we need to learn how to be disciples, disciples that are learning and disciples that are teaching. Yeah. And what I love back then is a disciple would follow the rabbi. So they would follow behind them. And the, as the rabbi is going through his life, his day, whether it's teaching, whether it's interacting with people, the disciple is watching how he mm-hmm. does things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that is such a, a life discipleship. And, you know, Michelle, you definitely had the times where you had all the girls over at your house and you were talking to them, you're having your coffee or tea and you're pouring into them. But also in life, you guys are getting together. They're seeing how you interact with other adults. They're seeing your work ethic. They see your church attendance. So they are, it's, it's not just those moments. And so we may be discipling people well, we are, whether we know it or not. Yeah, I will, my, I will hear something that my kids say, and um, then I'm like, "That was me." Or my daughter was teasing the other day, pretending to scold her brother. Um, You're gonna get your electronics taken away, and the way she said it is like, "That's exactly how I say it." I'm discipling her, whether I like it or not. But mm-hmm. also, I think sometimes it's we have to be also making an effort towards other people even beyond our home yes Yes, we have people that are in our orb but I'm thinking of so we just saw Michelle recently interacting with her and some of our kids and I've been telling one of my daughters about the daily bible podcast for a long time I gave her a chronological bible a couple years ago that I wrote in and wrote prayers for her and messages um it's been sitting on her shelf somewhere I sent her the link to the podcast many many times she has not been interested. Oh, but Michelle comes over and she's talking with Michelle. And the next day she's like, I, I found the Bible that she gave me. And I started listening to the podcast. And so thank you, Michelle, for, you know, it's just mom telling her something. But don't, don't think that just because you aren't a parent or have someone that's following you, you're not leading a Bible study, you can still be an influence and impact on yeah. other people who need that in their lives. So important. So true. Trisha, could you pray for us today? Just that we would, we would be a true disciple of Christ Mm -hmm. so that we could then disciple others. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And I thank Mm -hmm. you for this year of all Mm -hmm. these listeners that have said, I'm going to follow you, God. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to see how you interact. I'm going to um, follow your mandates and that have had soft hearts open to discipleship. Mm-hmm. The fact that they are listening, that they are dedicating themselves. There are a lot of people that are interested in the things of God, mm-hmm. but I thank you for every listener who has committed to knowing and following the ways of God. That commitment has really just just carried them and I'm so thankful. It keeps Michelle and I going and I know that pleases you, Lord. I pray that each of us may be a disciple, that we will, um, again, read God's word, but also live it out, and that the ripple effect in the people around us, we may never even realize, but also help us to reach others and be willing to to lead someone that's just maybe even two steps behind us, Lord. We can all be someone who disciples others, and I thank Mm -hmm. you and praise you and help you. Pray that you give us the wisdom to do this today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading John 3, John 4, and Luke 3, 19 through 20. And I want to take 
a second here to thank the fantastic team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their help, their guidance, and their belief in Trisha and myself. LifeAudio.com has developed an excellent platform, podcast platform, with you in mind. They have many Christian podcasts for kids, moms, dads, just about anyone wanting to grow in their understanding of God. LifeAudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.